Hi, my name's Marie. I'm one of the programme workers um, with Change, Grow, Live Nottinghamshire. This short um, video um, goes through some of the dangers associated with um, drinking um, and using coke um, at the same time. Um, and the understanding of what cocoethylene is and how it can impact on your health and well-being. So using alcohol and cocaine together causes a third drug um, to be produced in your liver. As most people know, your liver is responsible for detoxing our body from both, you know, illness, um, chemicals, what we eat, um, as well as obviously alcohol and um, substances. Substances we use like cocaine and alcohol um, will go through your blood uh, and into your liver. And when alcohol and cocaine meet in your liver at the same time, cocoethylene um, may be produced. So what is cocoethylene? Cocoethylene is um, a very toxic substance um, when those two um, you know, alcohol and drugs are used at the same time. It can create a, quite a euphoric effect, which makes it quite alluring um, enough when you combine alcohol and cocaine to get that cocoethylene high. But it is also um, extremely toxic on both the liver um, and on your heart. So regular prolonged use of those two substances combined can have a long lasting damaging effect on your cardiovascular system. So cocaine is dangerous enough itself on our cardiovascular system with it raising our blood pressure, uh, increasing our heart rate. Um, but those um, effects become supercharged um, with, with the production of cocoethylene. So why does it feel so good when um, I drink and use coke? Cocoethylene high produces euro euphoric effects because it blocks the reuptake of dopamine. Um, in our brains. So this causes you to be more prone to abuse both drugs because of that euphoric effect. Though there is no proof of cocaethylene addiction itself, there is proof that people who start drinking will so soon seek out cocaine for its effects. And even those of us who consider ourselves as, you know, casual weekend coke and alcohol users, we are just as risk as those that use every day uh, on a more heavier basis. Um, and there is evidence to suggest that cocaine overdoses have doubled in the past five years. In some people, cocaethylene can increase the duration and intensity of the high caused by cocaine. But the downside to that is that it is toxic um, and can, you know, create long and short term physical and mental health problems. So as we've um, seen that combining alcohol and cocaine is risky. Uh, and many of the time, alcohol is playing a part in the increase. So I'm going to go through some of the physical and mental health associated with mixing the two. And actually, the risk of overdose is 18 to 25 times higher when you combine alcohol and cocaine than when you only use coke on its own. So what are health impacts? Cocaethylene can force your heart rate and blood pressure to much, much higher levels than cocaine would do on its own. Even in, um, for those of us who consider ourselves to be healthy and quite fit, um, it can increase the chances of seizures, heart attacks and strokes. For anybody with an underlying heart condition, this is extremely risky.
Not only does it um, increase the toxicity of cocaine in your body and slows the rate at which your liver processes both cocaine and alcohol, this can put a higher strain on the liver and over time can cause serious damage as if you were drinking alcohol more frequently. And cocaine allows us to drink more alcohol um, because alcohol, while alcohol can you know, enhance the effect of cocaine, it can make it last twice as long. So let's look a bit closer at the toxic effect um, that coca ethylene has on our body. So when it's produced in the liver, um, it's you know really important to understand that it's actually way more toxic than cocaine. Studies have shown that um, toxicity is 30% higher um, than if you were just using cocaine. Once the liver starts producing it, the chemicals are released through the body and last us three times longer than cocaine. The toxicity in your body can last up to 12 hours once the production of cocaethylene has occurred in your liver. And researchers um, believe that the toxicity is responsible for many sudden deaths and heart problems with cocaine users um, of all ages. The combination of um, the disinhibiting effects of alcohol and the false confidence that you get um, when you use cocaine, you know, on top of you know the production of cocaethylene in your body, can lead to a heightened possibility of impulsive or reckless behaviour, and this can lead to violence because it affects our brain chemistry and how we react to situations that may be even slightly um, a confrontation. Researchers believe that the rage and violent behaviour associated with cocaine and alcohol use um, could be a result of the drug's effects on the neurotransmitters in the pleasure centres of our brain. It is also thought that cocaine and alcohol causes changes in the levels of some of the, um, the chemicals such as serotonin that can lead to aggressive behaviour, hyperactivity, impaired judgment and paranoia. So, other effects of cocaine and alcohol um, and the production of cocaethylene um, is that it can ruin sexual performance. Whilst it can make you feel really horny, um, it can be more difficult um, to get to maintain an erection um, and women can experience vaginal dryness. Reports that both men and women um, will find it more difficult to orgasm um, and that can increase the risk of damage um, to our sexual organs and also lead to an increased risk of STIs. Many people think that using coke will give the, you know, them a supercharged sexual supercharge as, you know, from the euphoria and surge in both any energy and sensory awareness. And while it may get you revved initially, that rush wears off um, and can have the negative consequences in both female and male sexual function. It is really important um, to not use any sexual stimulants such as Viagra alongside cocaine and alcohol, um, which all can put a massive strain on the heart. Certainly, definitely not recommended. So there's nothing to suggest that cocaethylene poses an increased risk of becoming um, dependent than using either of the two substances on their own. But you can become so used to using them both together that using one can start a craving for the other. As a result, a dependency for both can develop. These are some of the warning signs. 
when it starts to impact on your job, when relationships are affected, preoccupying thoughts about next use, experiencing palpitations, spending more money than you can really afford on cocaine, and when you start using on your own. So, if you've recognised that you do have a problem um, or would just like some more um, advice, information or to learn some practical tips in how to um, stop your cocaine and alcohol use, there is many things that you can do. You can sign up to some of our foundations of recovery groups and recovery focus groups that will give you um, lots of tools uh, to be able to use when you uh, get any cravings or to be able to say no when you're out with friends. You can look up some of the cocaine mutual aid groups such as Cocaine Anonymous. Um, they're currently running some virtual groups and I've included the, uh, the link to this in this presentation. But also start keeping a journal about how you feel. Are there any reoccurring themes that you need to consider addressing? Are there any underlying mental health issues, anxiety, low mood, isolation that you think you could get some support with? Again, we can support you in accessing those services. If you would like to self-refer to us, um, you'll have a telephone assessment after which you will be um, provided with information on how to access our virtual online groups. The self-referral number for that again is in the presentation. So I hope you found this um, brief video interesting uh, as provided some food for thought for your own um, cocaine and alcohol use. We do have some open groups that you are able to access without being one of our service users uh, and those inf that information is in front of you on this presentation. If you do need any more information or just would like to ask some questions as a result of this um, video, you can give us a call on the number previously stated or you can visit our website um, CGL Nottingham and we have a, a web chat function where you can ask some questions and uh, a member of staff will respond to you. Thank you for, for listening to this and I hope to see you soon.